Despite orders from Vorbrick to invade British East Africa, many German officers like Hauptmann Baumstark knew that his Askari natives at this point in time were only so loyal as victory would carry them. His concerning about invading the coastal areas and sieging Mombasa was being cut off by a naval landing in his rear by the British Royal Navy. Though things came together in the coming days after destroying buildings in Vanga that would force Hauptmann Baumstark to action, on the 14th of September a patrol from Jazen had found the British new defense works at Majoni. What's more, on the 20th of September, the HMS Pegasus vessel was sunk by the Konigsberg. In response, Hauptmann Baumstark took his force into British East Africa on the 21st of September. On the other end, Wavell had not been sitting idly by for the past two weeks. His unit of Arabs was joined by a section of miners, Legion of the Frontiersmen, working to gather intelligence, a pair of Towns Guard, working communications, and a section of police Ascari. They had erected a blockhouse like those made in the Boer War, and a trench line parallel to the nearby water features, and perpendicular to the roads moving through Majoni. These defenses were boosted by the use of Wavell's deploying pickets at various water crossings. On the morning of the 22nd of September, shots could be heard from a picket post at a swamp crossing on the Vango Road. But this column seems to have been a smaller one, as another column came around the swamp along the Emrima Road. But the alarm was already raised, and the British took up defenses off the trench line and blockhouse. The pickets were able to slow the smaller column and make it back to the trench. Here in the sources, it seems that Hauptmann Bomerken of the Schutz Company, German volunteers, seems to have been command of the following assaults. Hauptmann Baumstark's reason for absence isn't recorded in the sources. Nonetheless, after exchanging fire with the British trench and being hit by the British machine gun in the blockhouse, the Germans deployed their heavy machine guns to rake the trench line, thus reducing the effectiveness of the British rifle fire. As the German machine guns swept back and forth, the German infantry began to rush the flanks of the trench in an attempt to remove the British. After an exchange, the British decided the trench was untenable, and thus they ran back to the blockhouse over 100 yards of open ground. In the British account, no one died making their way back to the blockhouse. The Germans were unable to take the trench, though, as the British heavy machine gun also kept their forces from moving into the open ground. Whenever the Germans would fire, their black powder cartridges would reveal their position. The British must have been using smokeless powder in their Martini Henrys and assortment of other ammunition. The Germans continued to fire bullets at the blockhouse all day. As night fell, the action came to an end. Balmerkin ordered the retreat. They wouldn't move far, just back across to the southern bank of the nearby river. The action left one German and two British dead at the trenches and blockhouse. The various wounded included Wavell himself and would need to be evacuated. Despite the presence of a footpath, the thick brush made it difficult to quickly get the wounded to Mombasa. Getting fresh supplies to the blockhouse also made the position untenable, and Nairobi ordered the forces north to Ghazi on the 25th of September, just in time as the Germans moved in to assault the blockhouse again on the 26th of September. They moved quickly to occupy the enemy blockhouse but the buildings had just been booby-trapped, and a landmine had been placed to deny it to the enemy. The exploding material killed a handful of Ascari. The more potent effect, though, was psychological, as the Germans took to camping in the coastal swamp, safe from further phantom British bombs. Moving along the coast on the 28th of September, the Arab rifles and a German force had a rifle duel across the Ramizi River. Funnily enough, the Germans being on the northern bank and the British on the southern bank. British headquarters in Nairobi at this point felt Mombasa needed to be reinforced. Five companies were deployed to garrison Mombasa or reinforce the front at Ghazi. Two companies of the 29th Punjabis, the Jahind Imperial Service Infantry, and two of the 1st King's African Rifles with various heavy machine gun units attached. Command of the front shifted from Wavell who had been wounded to Major Hawthorne, who had quelled the Giriyama revolt the month prior. Hauptmann Baumstark had been slow and methodical in his advance, ordered by Vorbrick, weathering many reversals 
his force continued to move on Mombasa and had secured about 60 kilometers of British East Africa. He reported back to Warburg the shortcomings of his men's rifles and ammunition. He also reported to Warburg the Arab Corps attached to his command hadn't been helpful. Instead, the German Arab Corps was busy enslaving the local Wadigo tribe's male population after German patrols would raid villages for supplies. Vorberg in his account simply praises Hauptmann Baumstark's attacking and threatening the Mombasa port. Dismissing Hauptmann Baumstark's concerns and observations, Vorberg failing to bear in mind supplying and reinforcing this further after its losses, Hauptmann Baumstark continued to march north. Ironically, the coastal Widigo tribe was actually given a promise of protection from Major Hawthorne, who had gone from campaigning to subjugate the local populace to now elsewhere supplying them with food stores and left soldiers to defend them if they relocated to Yukunda, north of Ghazi, much to the annoyance of Nairobi, whose logistics and supplies were already stretched thin.